All right. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cecil. I'm the head of sales and operations here at IDP Philippines. And I'd like to welcome you to IDP Study in Regional Australia webinar featuring Victoria. Okay, so to give you a background, um, and sorry, before I start, I just want to remind everyone that this session is currently being recorded so that any of our colleagues or any of um, your friends who might be interested to also review this later on can do so. Um, we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel. All right. So before we start officially the webinar, I'd like to give a brief background on what this regional Australia all about. Okay. So or when people talk about regional Australia, what do they exactly mean? Okay. So region, when you talk about regional Australia, it's actually most of the locations of Australia outside the major cities, which are Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Okay. And for this afternoon, we are very lucky to have study Melbourne. And some of our participating schools like Deakin University, there is also um, Federation University, there will be Australian Catholic University, Kangan Institute, and Monash University to talk about um, where their schools are located in these regional areas in Victoria. So when we talk about regional Victoria, we're talking about the cities of Gippsland, of Swan Hill, of Warrnambool, you might have heard of Geelong, Bendigo, Ballarat, Wodonga. You know, these city, cities, they are outside Melbourne, but they're still in the region of Victoria. All right. So to give you a bit more, you know, detail into this and talk about, you know, what, what studying in regional Victoria offers. I'd like to pass it on to um, our esteemed colleague. Her name is Belinda Rimbo. She's the Education Services Director at Study Melbourne. Belinda, over to you. Thank you, Cecile. Okay, let me try to share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, that's good. Okay, good, more, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the, uh, the session today. So I'm here today um, to, uh, to share with you a bit of information about um, studying and living in Victoria, uh, particularly uh, in regional Victoria. Now, a bit of background about um, who I am and uh, what is um, study Melbourne. So uh, I work for the uh, Victorian government, uh, Australia, and study Melbourne is the brand that we use um, to promote Victorian uh, education uh, uh, providers worldwide. So um, Study Melbourne is um, the um, government, Victorian government initiative to provide support and information uh, to international students and to help them um, have the best possible time while they're studying and living in, uh, in uh, Victoria. So uh, we complement uh, the information and support system, uh, support uh, 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 services provided by your um, uh, education pro providers, by the university and by the TAFEs. And, uh, International students are valued and very important uh, members of um, our community. And we have provided, uh, I think, more support uh, to uh, our international students uh, in the time of a pandemic uh, uh, compared to any other Australian um, states and territory. Okay. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay. These, uh, in this slide, you can see some of um, the services that we provide uh, for international students. We have also a center called, um, um, uh, located in the city center called the Study Melbourne Student Center. So uh, international students uh, can come uh, to the center and enjoy the list of services that we offer. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, since the pandemic, the center has been closed uh, for offline services, but it can, uh, the, all the services are still available uh, uh, online. And also, uh, you can also reach the center by phone. So uh, we deliver events, activities, and, and programs from the center, as well as uh, including uh, as workshops for international students and on employability and entrepreneurship programs. And we also offer um, business incubator uh, programs uh, managed by uh, Outcome.life. So if you have like a, a, a business ideas while you're studying in uh, Victoria, you can come to, to the Study Melbourne Student Center and join the business incubator uh, programs there to make your business ideas come true. And uh, as mentioned, uh, 
we have like uh, uh, more, uh, I think um, to find out more information about the study Melbourne and also the programs that we offer, you can visit our website um, at study Melbourne um, students uh, at a study, uh, study, uh, study study study.melbourne. You, you just click study.melbourne and then you'll, you'll uh, link to, to our website. And we also have a uh, uh, post information regularly on our webs uh, on, uh, on, uh, on our social media, on our Instagram, Facebook and also newsletter and um, uh, and a page as well. And uh, when you um, decide to uh, to study in Victoria, and then we when you uh, reach uh, Melbourne, uh, when you arrive in, uh, you can actually download our um, Study Melbourne uh, app. Uh, it's called uh, Unlock Melbourne uh, app. So you can it's available uh, from um, App Store and also um, Google Play. Uh, and in the app, you can actually find information about where to go and or what to do and uh, things how to do things in, 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 in Melbourne. Now, a bit of information about uh, Victoria uh, for those of you who have never been to, uh, to Victoria before. So as you can see from, uh, from the map, uh, uh, state, the state of Victoria is located at the bottom of um, the uh, continent of Australia. So we are pretty small um, state in terms of size, uh, only about 3% uh, uh, land, maze, uh, land mass. And but around 26% of our Australian population uh, live in the state of Victoria. Uh, Victoria is also known as the education state, uh, and this reflects um, the Victorian government's um, focus on uh, maintaining high standard of education uh, and research in the state. Every year, uh, I think uh, this is like before the pandemic, we attracted uh, about uh, 300,000 uh, international students to study and uh, live in Victoria. But uh, the number uh, did uh, drop uh, uh, due to the COVID pandemic. So now we have uh, over 130,000 um, uh, international students enrolled. Okay. Uh, and while you are in Melbourne, there are a lot of things that you can do and see from um, striking the uh, uh, public spaces, um, state of the art uh, museums, uh, enjoy the wildlife, um, uh, 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 and also uh, a lot of like. Um, a very nice nature uh, walks uh, 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 around the, uh, the city, uh, uh, around the regional areas, and you can actually explore um, the food and uh, cuisine also available in Victoria. Melbourne is known uh, as uh, for the uh, coffee culture. So if you, for those of you who enjoy um, uh, drinking coffee and also uh, uh, eating uh, good food, there are plenty of that uh, to, uh, to explore in, in uh, Melbourne and in Victoria. As uh, Cecile mentioned earlier, uh, there are um, several, uh, there are actually nine uh, um, uh, regional areas in Victoria, uh, Bendigo, uh, Ballarat, uh, Geelong, Gippsland, uh, Mildura, Shepparton, uh, Swan Hill, Wanambool, and Wodonga. And these are all uh, towns and small cities uh, 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 not too far from um, the city of Melbourne. So I think we're probably uh, by uh, train ride, it's only about one hour. So what's the benefit of um, studying and living in, in uh, regional Victoria? So um, studying and living in regional Victoria offers a very relaxed um, uh, lifestyle. And also at the same time, it's also um, uh, uh, cheaper uh, because like I think uh, housing uh, options are uh, cheaper than uh, compared to the city of Melbourne. And uh, I think uh, some of the um, uh, university uh, that we are going to uh, hear from today, we also mentioned about um, the benefit of um, studying and living in their um, uh, their uh, regional regional areas. So uh, I think uh, with that, I will I will not go through uh, too much uh, into this uh, information. As I think uh, all the uh, representative from um, our university will also um, talk about this. Uh, but I think one thing that I want to mention to you is that we offer the um, pathway to uh, Victoria um, um, scholarship. So um, this scholarship uh, actually. Uh, uh, provides um, support uh, for students who want to take uh, English programs and also foundation programs before they actually uh, go into their um, uh, main um, study uh, options, which is like the uh, bachelor degree, the undergraduate degree. So you can actually uh, 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 talk to um, the uh, uh, providers that you're interested to enroll in uh, about this scholarship. So these scholarships will allow you to um, get uh, funding uh, or support up to 2,500 uh, per students. And uh, to get more information about um, um, study in regional areas, you can actually go to our website, studymelbourne.tic.gov.au and uh, slash uh, uh, study uh, beyond uh, Melbourne. So uh, from there, uh, you can actually uh, find out more information about um, studying and living in uh, regional areas. And I think with that, I think I will pass to um, 
maybe Deacon uh, to um, provide more information about study aid at their waterfront, at their beautiful waterfront campus. Thank you, Belinda. I'm just going to, oops, see if I can share my screen. How is that? Yep. All good. Better? Yes. Okay. All right. So thanks. Um, hello, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all. Uh, my name is Angela Puskic. You can call me Ange. I'm the International Manager at Deakin University, and I'm delighted to be part of the Study in Regional Victoria webinar. Uh, thanks to uh, IDP and Study Melbourne, uh, Belinda and Cecil and the team for organising this session and have, having Deakin participate. So thank you very much. Okay, the first slide, I just, I've got snippets of, of Deakin University um, campus. So th that's the first slide that I just wanted to show you some of our facilities. Okay, so Deakin, who is Deakin and where is Deakin? So Deakin University is a comprehensive university. We offer undergraduate, undergraduate degrees right through to research. Um, we have four physical campuses across three cities. Um, that's Melbourne, Geelong and Warrnambool. So in this presentation, I will focus more on the regional locations, which are our Geelong campuses, our Waterfront and Warn Ponds, and also the Warrnambool campus, which is located about two hours away from Geelong. Okay. So before I start, I just wanted to highlight Deakin's rankings um, just very quickly. So we are ranked in the top 1% of all universities worldwide. We are quite a young university and we are ranked in the top 50 young universities in the world. So we're around 48 years young. And I'm really proud to, um, to say that we have, we have been ranked the highest level of overall student satisfaction among universities in the state of Victoria for 12 years in a row. So we're really proud of that ranking. Um, we also have a, a number of other rankings, but I won't get into the rankings because it's all about regional. So I'm going to start with Geelong. Um, Belinda mentioned a little bit about Geelong. So we do have two campuses in Geelong. So Geelong Warn Ponds, um, is the largest campus we have in Geelong. So it's established in a rural setting with surf beaches and the famous Great Ocean Road, which you may have heard about, at its doorsteps. Um, our Geelong Warren campus is loved by many students and nature enthusiasts alike because it's set on uh, large hectares of land. Um, it's positioned with some of the most advanced research facilities in the world. So we have about 8,000 students studying at this campus. Um, it's, um, this, well, it's the second largest physical campus um, below the Melbourne Burwood campus. Um, it's home to uh, our Deakin Medical School and Regional Community Health Hub. We have the Centre for Advanced Design and Engineering and Training housed at the Warn Ponds, the Institute for Frontier Materials and the Carbon Nexus Research Facility. Quite a beautiful campus and you can take a shuttle bus from Warn Ponds to Waterfront and it's about 15 minutes um, uh, time frame. The courses that we have offered at our Warn Ponds campus uh, courses, I couldn't list them all because there was quite a few, but they have courses in arts and education, communication, engineering, IT, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, criminology, medicine, medicine exercise and sports science, psychological science. Um, you can see it's all the sciences are there um, and biotechnology and bioinformatics. So quite a various um, study area there. The Waterfront Campus, now I'm a bit biased because I'm actually based at the Waterfront Campus when I'm working on campus. Um, so it's perched right on the seafront in the city, um, in the heart of the city. So uh, the Geelong Waterfront Campus is housed in a historical building. It's a 19th century wool shed, which has been extensively renovated and beautifully restored. Um, we have about 5,000 students studying at our Waterfront Campus. Um, it has state-of-the-art facilities, which include um, the architecture studios, 
the Moot Law Courts and the Occupational Therapy Labs. Really beautiful campus um, uh, right in the heart of the city. The courses that are offered at the Waterfront Campus are Architecture, Construction Management, Design, Creative Arts, Business and Commerce, but only in the undergraduate level, Law, Social Work, Occupational Therapy, Nursing and Midwifery, Human Resources and Psychology. They're the courses that are offered. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about, and I know Belinda mentioned this, but I'll just quickly give you a snippet of living in Geelong. So Geelong, we have about 260,000 population. Um, so not a huge city compared to Melbourne, but it is a vibrant city still. I've had um, Filipino students and agents come to visit the campus and they're quite surprised when they come because it's, it's a city, it's got shopping, um, it's got restaurants, it's quite a lovely, lovely place to live. Um, low cost of living um, compared to Melbourne. Um, and it's known for its diversity of events. So there's lots of festivals, including Paco Festival, which is a multicultural street festival, which is all about different food. Um, Ge Geelong After Dark, which is a night festival. And we also have the music festival um, and the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race, which you may have heard on the news. Um, so it's a really lovely city, close to the tourist locations and the, and the wonderful beaches. And yet it's not that far from Melbourne. So it's a train ride. The, the station is actually right around the corner from the campus. So it takes about an hour and 15 minutes to get into Melbourne. And the trains are quite often, they're regular trains. There's a lot of people that live in Geelong that work in Melbourne. Um, and that's because of the cost of living as well. And now being a regional city, if you choose to study here, you may be eligible for the extra year of post-study work rights um, with the Australian government's temporary graduate visa. Warrnambool, um, beautiful campus, set on the banks of the Hopkins River, um, three hours um, from Melbourne. Our Warrnambool campus is arguably the most scenic campus. It's home to a very close-knit community of ambitious students and staff. And it's beautifully, uh, and it's a beautiful campus located right on the Great Ocean Road with access to the tourist beaches and the 12 apostles. Um, we have, this is our smallest campus. Um, it's about, we have about 517 students, uh, really beautiful, uh, located on the Hopkins River as well. Um, it has advanced facilities such as the aquaculture facility, the YOLA, which is a sophisticated research vessel, um, and the nursing simulation environment. Um, Warrnambool is really lovely. It's about 30,000 population, so quite a small regional town, very tight-knit community. Um, we do have a, lot, a nice group of Filipino students actually studying there at, at um, the Warrnambool campus. Um, we have quite a few doing nursing and psychology. Um, really beautiful campus. So a little bit about living in Warrnambool. It is really friendly and a welcoming atmosphere and they really embrace culture. They really embrace lots of different countries um, and diversity. Um, it's a beautiful, quiet um, town. Um, and you do have the train that goes to Melbourne as well. So there is actually a train station located on the campus that goes to Melbourne. Um, because it's a regional town as well, you would be eligible for the extra post study, the extra year for post study work rights with the Australian government. So really beautiful town. If you're not, if you're happy to stay in a quiet environment and not fussed about being distracted by nightlife, uh, Warrnambool is the place um, I recommend. The courses offered are Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Nursing, Bachelor of Education Primary, Bachelor of Envi Environmental Science, uh, Marine Biology, Nursing, two double degrees, Nursing and Midwifery and Nursing and Psychological Science. Um, just quickly wanted to highlight the scholarships we have. So we have quite a range of scholarships. Um, we have a lot of incentive for students to study at our Warrnambool location. So students that apply to Warrnambool will get a 20%, it's automatically assessed, you don't need to apply. You will um, receive a 20% um, uh, scholarship towards your student contribution. Um, in addition to that, 
we you can use this scholarship in conjunction with the Warnable Residential International Scholarship. We don't normally give two scholarships um, uh, together, but with this we do. So the Warnable Residential International Scholarship is for students who are staying on campus and they they may be eligible to receive 50%. So you get 50% towards accommodation and 20% towards your tuition fee. Um, Warnable also is part of the Destination Australia Scholarship. So you may have an opportunity to receive a Destination Australia Scholarship also, and that provides $15,000 a year. Um, that's run by the Australian government. Now, if you are successful in the Destination Australia, we also give you the residential, so they can work together as well. And that supports you with your accommodation. The other two we have are the Deakin Vice Chancellor International Scholarship offers 50 or 100 and the Deakin International Scholarship, which offers 25%. Those two are quite competitive and you do need to apply for those two scholarships. And I just wanted to share this slide of our wonderful Filipino students that have studied at Deakin. If you scan the QR code, it will take you to their stories. So please read their stories. Um, you know, a lot of our students, all of them that I've met, uh, really love studying at Deakin. So it's really good to just um, uh, connect and, and, and um, see the stories of these students and what they've been studying and their journey at Deakin University. And last but not least, um, this is my email address. Um, feel free to connect uh, my mobile. Um, happy to talk more about the regional locations. I've got tons of videos, but I didn't have enough time to um, share um, at this session. So thank you very much. Thanks all. Thank you, Belinda and Cecil. Thank you, Ange, from Deakin University. Um, next in line is our colleague from Federation University, Dan Cherry. Dan, take it away. Thanks, Cecil. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Yep, screen. Yes, we can. Yep. Okay, awesome. Okay, thanks Cecil, thanks Belinda, IDP Philippines for organizing today's event. Um, yeah, welcome everybody and thanks for attending. Um, I hope that um, your life is getting back to normal after a really difficult two years. And I hope that things are getting back to normal life for you. We're very happy to be welcoming international students back to Australia uh, on campus this week. It's been beautiful weather, sunshine on campus. It's been great to see uh, new students coming back to campus from all over the world for their orientation this week. So yeah, I've had a great couple of days back on campus. So my name's Dan. I work at Federation University Australia. Federation University has a long history uh, as a higher education provider. We're actually the third oldest provider of higher education in Australia. Um, we were founded in 1870, um, but we became a university in 1994 as a University of Ballarat. And uh, we changed our name to Federation University in 2014 because we took on new campuses. And we're now ranked in the top 250 young universities worldwide. So at Federation University, we have a great reputation for um, teaching quality, student support. Like I said, on campus today, I met quite a few students, including quite a few Filipino students, and people had a lot of good things to say about the support they've been getting from us on campus. We always come at the top or near the top in Victoria for teaching quality, skills development, and student support. So we have small class sizes, which means that you get extra personal attention, and that leads to great student satisfaction. We also have great employment outcomes for our students. So one important thing to remember today is that just because you're going to a smaller town, if you're thinking about going to a regional city, doesn't mean that there aren't great job opportunities. So you can see the Federation is number one university in Victoria for full-time graduate employment. And our main campuses are in regional areas. So students who study in regional areas have access to great 
job opportunities. Of course, there are less jobs in smaller cities than in Melbourne or Sydney, but there's also a lot less competition. So if you come to a smaller city like Ballarat, you can make great connections and you can um, increase your opportunity to find good part-time and graduate work. Okay, Federation University, we have affordable tuition fees, which range from $20,000 to $30,000 per year. We also have great scholarships and automatic 20% tuition fee reduction for all undergraduate and postgraduate international students in 2022. That will be for the whole of your degree. And if you've done really well in your previous studies, you could be eligible for a 25% merit-based global excellence scholarship. We also have an accommodation scholarship, which is worth up to $4,000 discount on your first year campus accommodation, which is roughly 50% of the cost of living on campus. Okay, so where are we based? Federation University, we have campuses in big cities like Melbourne and Brisbane, but our main campuses, our biggest campuses are in regional Victoria, are in Ballarat and Gippsland. I'll show you in a second where those places are. So this is our Gippsland campus over here. You can see it's a, it's a really big campus. It used to be a Monash campus, um, surrounded by nature. Um, and I'll tell you more about Gippsland in a second. But our Ballarat and Gippsland campuses, why would you come to a smaller regional city? Well, firstly, there's really affordable accommodation. It's much cheaper than living in Melbourne or Sydney. There's a great quality of life, like really welcoming community and living quality is really high. Um, like I said before, there are great employment opportunities as well. And there's that post-study work visa. So if you come to Australia and you, and you uh, do a bachelor degree, you will get two years post-study work visa. If you do a master, you will get three years. But if you come and study in Ballarat or Gippsland, and you keep living and working in Ballarat and Gippsland after you finish your degree, you can stay for an extra two years. So for example, you come to do a Ballarat, a master's in Ballarat, you study with us for two years, you really enjoy your life in Ballarat, you find a job and you keep living and working in Ballarat, then you can stay for five years after you finish your degree, no problems at all. Okay, so here's where our campuses are. We already talked about where Victoria is. So we have a campus in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. This is our main campus in Ballarat, which I'm gonna focus on today. And then over here, we have a campus in Gippsland. So Ballarat is just about, just over an hour on the train from Melbourne. Gippsland is about um, two hours drive from the city center of Melbourne. There's also trains. So our Gippsland campus, a wide range of programs available there, especially undergraduate programs. It's got great facilities, good industry connections. Uh, we have nursing there, public health, engineering, certain engineering courses, and a wide range of other courses. So it's a really relaxed regional lifestyle. There's great facilities. It's predominantly domestic students in um, Gippsland, but we're seeing a growing number of international students. And I visited Gippsland six months ago and like the feedback, the testimonials from the students was amazing. Like they really love the community. Everyone's very welcoming. They get amazing support from the, from the university and the local community. And also, you know, the na natural scenery around Gippsland is amazing. It's a really beautiful place to explore. And then our second regional campus, our home campus, uh, is Ballarat. So Ballarat is where I live. I lived in Melbourne for nine years before I moved to Ballarat. And I can tell you that Ballarat's a great place to live. It's a really attractive, historic city. It's famous in Australia for the Australian gold rush that happened in the 1850s. So people found gold near Ballarat and lots of people from all over the world came to try to find their fortune in Ballarat. You can see beautiful old buildings from the 19th century. Um, it's now Victoria's third largest city after Melbourne and Geelong, which Angela was just talking about. So it has a population of just over 120,000 people, but it's growing fast. And I think it's a great place for international students because we have really high quality education and facilities. It's more affordable fees and accommodation. It's a relaxed and enjoyable lifestyle. And there are those regional incentives like the post-study work visa 
and employment opportunities. So here's our campus in Ballarat, surrounded by nature. The student accommodation is over here. So when you wake up in the morning, you can see kangaroos jumping around outside your window, but you can walk to campus easily. There are buses from here into the city center, it just takes five, 15 minutes. And around the campus, there's also a technology park with big companies like IBM and Concentric. So if you're interested in IT, we have really great connections with IBM that could uh, you know, help you with work placements and possibly even your future career. So on campus, this is our science and engineering facility, great space for engineering and science labs. We have excellent nursing labs, beautiful lecture theaters, um, we have great student life. We have about 4,000 students on campus, about a thousand of them are international students and we have a growing number of students from the Philippines. Um, and here's the accommodation. You could share, uh, live on campus, share, I'm oh, sorry, have your own bedroom in a shared unit. And um, yeah, it works out at about $100 a week after the scholarship that you will be paying. And that includes all of your bills and your internet. So why study in Ballarat? I've already told you about some of the things, but here's some more examples. The cost of living. So in Melbourne, the government says that a bedroom is gonna cost you on average $266 a week for rent. In Ballarat, that's $106. So you can see it's much more affordable than living in a big city. Also, you can stay in Australia longer. So you can get uh, a post-study work visa extended by two more years. So you can stay up to five years if you do a master's, up to four years after a bachelor. Um, faster visa processing for regional areas and also access to a regional occupations list. So there are lots of good opportunities in regional Victoria. There's a skill shortage. And, and you know, the Australian government is encouraging students to go to regional areas through the post-study work visa and other schemes, because there are opportunities for international students in regional areas like Ballarat. Like I said before, there are less jobs, but there's less competition for part-time and graduate work. Ballarat itself is a really interesting, attractive city. It's got a relaxed, enjoyable lifestyle and a good community feel. You're gonna make a lot of local friends and other international friends, but there is also an established Filipino community. About one in a hundred people in Ballarat were born in the Philippines. So what can you do in Ballarat? You can enjoy the city, beautiful uh, streets, beautiful architecture. Uh, lake Wendouree is a really amazing lake close to the city center. It's beautiful for picnics and walks. Um, and there's great bars, restaurants, cafes, and museums. One of the most famous museums is Sovereign Hill, which is an outdoor museum of the gold rush. You can um, you know, go back to gold rush times and experience mining for gold yourself. Melbourne is just over an hour away on the train, so you can really enjoy your life in, in Ballarat and then go and have a great time exploring Melbourne at the weekend if you'd like to. And then we have the Great Ocean Road, which is just an hour and a half drive away from Ballarat, and the Grampian Mountains, which is also just an hour and a half away. And in Australia, an hour and a half drive is very close, right? It's a very big country, so to be so close to these places is really is really important and it means you'll explore a lot more of Australia than if you were studying in Melbourne. Okay, hopefully I have time, just five minutes to show you this video of students talking about their ex experiences in uh, Ballarat. So you hear from students themselves about uh, life in Ballarat. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big meeting starts in 10 minutes. So at the start of this video, you will see a little bit of our Gippsland campus, and then you'll see the Ballarat campus. All the students who are talking and graduates are talking about their experiences in Ballarat, studying and living in Ballarat. And when I was thinking about coming to Australia, um, I really want to know the country and want to know the culture. I feel like Australia has more than just, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, the big cities. Um, I want to know the countryside. I want to know another side of the culture. Great opportunities, work-life balance, 
and uh, the faculty was very helpful. We used to have lots of practical experience around the course. I lived two years on campus um, and the first year um, it was really, really great interacting with domestics and uh, clearing all those barriers and learning more about Australia. We do activity every week like badminton, barbecue, have a walk and board games and that kind of thing. The class size is smaller compared to other universities so you get to know your classmates and you get to know your teacher really well. Um, and my classmates were so supportive. I, I really feel like I'm supported and I'm cared for. The lecturer knows us by name. We can ask them questions about the problems we have, the theory uh, in the courses. Uh, we're just like friends, closer to friends than lecturer and students. I found Fed Uni very supportive. So due to pandemic, all the places closed down and I was working in hospitality. However, Fed Uni supported me with my expenses, utilities, petrol, yeah. additional counseling services. So that's, that's fantastic. I, I can agree. The university really, really make sure that international students got the support that they needed. It's lovely actually, everything is it's close, um, life is a bit cheaper, things feel just easier. Um, it's not super competitive as well if you want to find a job. I like the area, I like the uni, the support from uni, uh, friendly people, a nice environment, beautiful city. Many people know each other, it's easy to build up networking. So I'm enjoying whenever I'm on the street, I say hi to at least 10 people. Oh, I know you from there. Oh, oh you work there and all. Yeah, that's fantastic. Another thing about being, um, about studying in regional Victoria is that you get the four year um, postgraduate visa once you're done with your, with your degree. Well, four years is, is just great if, you, if you're actually planning to, um, you know, work in Australia and get that work experience. Even though I graduated now, I love where I live, I love Ballarat, so I'm not moving back to Melbourne. <laughs> it's still so close to Melbourne, you know, you can get there in just an, a bit over an hour. So I think um, it's a perfect spot for, you know, to enjoy the country life and so close to the city. I just feel like I'm home. Completely, it was only and only because of my degree that I was able to find work. All credit goes to my course and Federation University for letting me become a social worker. Studying at Federation University itself has give me, given me exposure to um, the interna international industry such as IBM. And then in, in front of the IBM as well, there is a Ballarat Technology Park where I used to work as well. But not only you are studying, but you also get exposure of the actual real life industry itself. I really enjoyed my placement and I think my school kind of enjoyed having me there. So I was offered a job after placement uh, a few months before I finished my st study. So I got the job. In my final year, uh, I was lucky enough to be a session tutor for structural designing. Uh, so I was able to work with my fellow lecturers as a tutor and also that uh, experience uh, led, led me to become a stru graduate structural engineer at Cardinal TGM in Ballarat. And I moved on to doing PhD, I also had the support and then the opportunity came up and I applied to be a, uh, a lecturer at Fakuni and here I stay. Yeah, so we now, we now run a company together. Um, we are doing website and mobile application developments and designs. So it's, yeah, it's just very exciting things. I like coding, he likes uh, managing people, so it's like a perfect couple, right? What I spent as fees and my time, it's paying back double now. So I'm just, I feel privileged, honestly. You, if you want to um, spend your life as a student in regional area, I think Federation is a place to be. Okay, thank you so much for watching that video. I know I've got to the end of my time, so I'm just going to quickly, very quickly, just say what courses we offer. We have School of Business, Health, Engineering, IT, and Physical Sciences, Science, Psychology, and Sport, Education, and Arts. Some of our most popular courses are Bachelor of Nursing, Master of Social Work, Master of Teaching. We have some great IT degrees uh, co-designed with IBM. Um, 
And if you'd like to find out more about Federation, you can go to our website, you can go to our YouTube channel, you can follow us at FedUni Australia, or you can email me d.cherry at federation.edu.au. So thanks for coming today. Thanks for listening to me. And I will hand back to Cecil. Hi, everyone. So on behalf of Cecil, um, to take on with the next presenter. So just to recap for those who just came in. So we've had, um, wait, hold on. So Deakin University with Ange, then um, just finished was Deakin in, um, Federation University with Dan. Then to follow would be Mithun for, for Australian Catholic University. So take it away, Mithun. Hi, Mithun. Okay, so while we wait for Mithun, perhaps we can um, gather some questions if there are for um, Deacon and Fed Uni. Any questions from the rest of the students? So by the way, for the students that we have for this afternoon, so these are current students or those who are students who are still considering their options for um, Melbourne. Um, there are also students here who are not quite sure yet of which location to choose. So perhaps this is a good opportunity for them to consider the regional areas of Melbourne and Victoria. Okay, so um, I think um, we can proceed with the next presenter if um, Mithun is not yet ready. So may we call on Salda if you're available available for Kangen Institute. Hi, Salda. Sure. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, just bear with me. Again, I'll try to share my screen. Can you see my screen? All good. All good. Okay. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thanks to IDP and Study Melbourne for inviting me to this webinar. Um, my name is Selda Kutch and I mainly look after the um, student recruitment at um, Bendigo Kangan Institute. So Bendigo Kangan Institute trades as Kangan Institute and Bendigo TAFE. Um, we have uh, campuses, Kangan Institute has all of the metro campuses within Melbourne and Bendigo TAFE is where all of our regional campuses are, are situated. Now, although I'm based at um, Kangan Institute, um, I manage the recruitment of uh, international students for both of our brands. We'll see if it allows me to do it this way without. Can you see that? There, yeah. Can you see that? I'm really sorry. I'm going to probably have to show it in this view because um, otherwise it's hiding all of my other presentations or all the other pages. I really apologize for this. Um, Sorry about that. Um, so what I want to do first is introduce Bendigo, the region. Um, and so again, Bendigo is very close to Melbourne. It's only 90 minutes. So it's uh, an hour and a half drive, which uh, as mentioned by um, Dan, it's not very far in uh, Australia. Um, and it's quite surprising. The population is of 130,000 people. So when Bendigo, Kang, uh, where Bendigo Tafe and Kangan Institute merged into 2014, um, I was pleasantly surprised because when I first visited our Bendigo region, I did anticipate something smaller, but it's quite uh, established um, and there's quite a lot to do and a lot of amenities and services there um, for students. Okay, a little bit about the history. So Bendigo officially got its name in 1871, so it's quite established and old, like I said. And again, uh, like Federation Uni, uh, Bendigo is really known for its gold rush era, and it was uh, one of the cities that had the most found gold. Um, and uh, due to the gold rush, we have had a lot of migrants, in particular uh, the Chinese population, and they've left a considerable uh, rich cultural presence within the region, uh, being the uh, Golden Dragon Museum, the uh, Imperial Dragon, as well as the oldest temple in Australia. Also, we're known for the uh, city in the forest, um, due to all of the national parks and gardens. And we're um, very, very famous for all the potteries that dates back since the 1850s. 
So some of the main attractions around the region include the, um, the wine tours, the Golden Dragon Museum and the temple, like I mentioned earlier, the Pottery Museum's Art Gallery, the Talking Tram. We have wineries around the area. We have a, uh, lots of regional parks and gardens to explore for those that like the outdoor walking and cycling. I just want to make sure that you could still see my presentation okay, although not ideally, but is it still visible? Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Um, what I wanted to do first is actually introduce you to TAFE um, because the rest of my colleagues are, are from the university um, sector. So what TAFE is, is, is technical and further education. So it's a government run system that provides educational and vocational courses. Um, we focus on specific skills for particular workforce. Um, and this could be done by practical placement or on-campus training. So it's not just the theory, but students will gain all the practical skills as well. Um, and you can do um, education training within the three sectors which are interconnected. So you can study at TAFE here in Australia while, while you're doing schools, and it's called uh, vet in schools. You can study um, at the TAFE, the vocational courses at the TAFE, or you can also study in, um, in conjunction with the higher education as well. So what's VET? Um, vocational education training. So these are all vocational courses. And the purpose of them is it provides skilled workforce and nationally recognised qualifications for knowledge-based competencies. So it ensures that students have the skills and the knowledge within a particular career. They're accredited courses, they're industry recognised skill sets and they're units of competency. So often when uh, students complete a vocational course, um, the transcripts are not graded. You're either com competent or you're not competent. What that means is you've demonstrated you, can, you, can, you know the skill, you know the knowledge and you've passed or you're deemed not competent where you have to um, continue learning that skill until you become um, competent. It enables students to gain the specific skills they need when they need them. And VET training focuses on certificate all the way to advanced diploma level qualifications. And obviously you don't stop there. It does offer a pathway to universities via formalized or unformalized pathways um, or agreements that we have negotiated with um, very reputable universities. So it allows you that transition of studies for those that want to continue into their bachelor or higher. So why study at TAFE? Um, some of the advantages here is obviously the first one is strong industry connections. And I want to, what I want to do is emphasize in my upcoming slides a little bit more about that. Um, the practical placement and training, and that's the most significant and most important one um, because it allows you to practice what you are learning as you're studying through the course. In fact, some courses have compulsory practical um, workplace that's embedded in the course, primarily our health and community based courses, um, our automotive course is the same. Um, we're government owned, so uh, there's an element of stability, small class sizes, so it's, it's you know, very familiar uh, for students that have just come out of high school or don't really want to study in really big lecture theatres, they're all small classroom based, um, lower fees, vocational courses are a little bit lower. Um, you also are integrated with all the Australian students that are studying um, at the time. And our campuses and the facilities are very well equipped. And in fact, they're purpose built to teach and train in certain areas or careers. I want to emphasize the role of the industry partners because the industry partners are significantly important for um, particularly studying vocational courses. And so they have their three primary role is to set the policy. Um, so what they do is set the guidelines, like, for instance, in nursing, there's ANMAC. So they tell you what, you know, students need to study, what their uh, competencies they need to achieve and the entry requirements. Um, they also ensure currency. So they develop and revise all of the competence, comp competency standards regularly um, and the delivery and support for the vocational training. So they're really, really significant when you're studying um, vocational courses at TAFE. Um, the other importance, uh, the three areas I've, I've highlighted here is um, they accurately align the trading assessment practices to the methods, technology and um, the methods that is used in the current industry in Australia in the workplace. So again, it ensures currency. So you, you can rest assured that um, once you've completed a, qual a qualification, it meets current needs. The training and um, assessment practices must be informed by the industry. So they communicate to us 
um, when uh, skill sets are changing and when they require training packages to be updated because they no longer need skills or they need new skill sets for some um, careers and enable students access to the industry standard equipment and people with relevant um, industry experience. So it's quite significant. Um, and so the most important feature is that ensures that st students are employment ready when they uh, to enter the workforce, when they often complete some of their qualifications. And here is just a, a very small snip of our industry partners. Um, we have a whole bunch of them that I couldn't fit on the page. Um, so about Bendigo Tangan, Bendigo Tape, sorry. Um, we, we're quite an old established institute. We've been operating since 155 years, but we've had various names throughout. Uh, recently, we changed to Bendigo TAFE in 2009. Um, and again, uh, we merged with Tangan Institute in 2014, um, and we have 8,000 enrolments per year. Um, our campuses, we have five campuses spread out throughout the Bendigo region. Um, the Bendigo City, Charleston Road, Echuca, Castlemaine and BTEC. Um, for our international students, um, we mainly help uh, host them on the Bendigo City campus because that's currently where our, our course offerings are. In terms of the course offerings, we actually have a, a really wide diverse range um, uh, for our domestic students. Um, and they include trades, automotive, plants, animals, hair, beauty, business, hospitality, food, fibre. So it's really extensive. Um, and I just want to highlight some of our centres of excellence that are quite recent um, within the region. Um, and, and so you can see with this significant investment that the, the regional spaces are becoming really important and they are growing uh, all um, so with our Health and Community Centre of Excellence, it was actually officially opened in March 2018, and it's a $25 million Health and Community Centre of Excellence, so it's quite a significant investment, and it was mainly um, to uh, align the industry and um, form connections, um, particularly with work placement. And this centre has simulated work labs. It's even got its own aged care home centre. We deliver children's services, pathology, disability, or everything there too. Um, the other centre of excellence that I want to highlight is our Food and Fibre Centre of Excellence. Again, this was opened in April 2018. And again, it was another significant spend. And the whole purpose of this was to, you know, uh, the concept is paddock to plate. We also uh, deliver animal studies and some other various programs here at our Food and Fibre Centre of Excellence. The most recent investment, uh, we are very, very lucky, is um, $60 million provided by the Victorian government. Um, and we call this the Bendigo Campus Revitalisation Project. Um, and it was purely to strengthen the TAFE system in Victoria by bridging the gaps and creating opportunities regionally. So um, it officially opened on the 10th of November in 2021. And we are very lucky to have had our Premier, Mr. Dan Andrews, come and officially open uh, the, the, um, the campus. Um, and the campus, uh, the revitalization project included three new buildings, Hair and Beauty, our Indigenous Centres, Creative Department, as well as our um, hospitality department with um, new cafes and restaurants. So why would you study at Bendigo TAFE? Um, some of my colleagues and, and Belinda went through uh, this earlier. Um, here's a list here. Um, and maybe my, I'd like to emphasize that, you know, it's away from the big cities. Um, so you have that um, connectiveness with the community as with um, Federation Uni's uh, vis, uh, video. Um, and, you know, students are given incentives um, from the government, obviously the Victorian Pathway Scholarships and the destination. Um, so it, it is going, the regional studies is um, quite, it's becoming popular um, and it's, it's, it's a growing region with a lot of job opportunities um, and uh, other uh, in, uh, advantages that I've listed here in my, my slide. So with regards to international students, um, like I said earlier, we do offer a, a diverse range of programs across our Bendigo TAFE and Tangan Institute uh, brands. But with international students at the moment, we do have a bit of a limited portfolio currently, but as um, we will grow the course offerings in our regional spaces, but currently we have commercial cookery, bakery, beauty, nursing, and community services. Um, 
And uh, you can find more details here on our website. So with regards to entry requirements, so it's, it's quite, entry into vocational courses is um, quite standard in terms of uh, students need to be 18 first. They must have completed year 12 or equivalent. We only require an academic IELTS of 5.5. You don't need any previous studies or experience. We don't require a portfolio or anything else to enter some of our uh, professional areas. Um, some courses might have some extra uh, requirements like working with children uh, checks or police checks. Um, and some courses like the Diploma of Nursing might have some more specialised uh, prerequisites. So we do try to, with regards to the application process, it's quite seamless. It's, you just provide the application form, provide supporting documentation. We put a lot of emphasis on ensuring applicants are GTE. You might have to undergo an interview or other test in certain specialised uh, uh, courses. Our timeline is, uh, turnaround time is very quick. Um, and most of our students usually apply via an authorised agent. Why would you study with all the support that international students receive at our Bendigo, TAFE or Kangan Institute campuses include a de dedicated international team and we have a, a student support officer. Our teaching coordinators um, are appointed in every study area that international students are learning um, and they report to us on a regular basis and monitor um, academic attendance and progress. We have study skill support. We offer dedicated orientation and graduations. We have student support. We have an employment centre. Um, most importantly is the Talk Campus. The Talk Campus was introduced in the peak of COVID um, and it was quite useful during that time when students were isolated and it offered peer-to-peer -peer connection um, to ensure that students were not um, facing things alone and had uh, people to continually talk to. And here is my contact details. Um, so the applications and inquiries, this is me here. These are our websites if you'd like to learn more. And I apologize again. Um, for my presentation not working, um, but please feel free to, to send me any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Salada. So that's it. So um, basically, I'll do a recap once again, since I think um, there are some new joiners. So we've had um, the Study Melbourne presentation by Belinda, then Deakin University with Ange, Federation University with Dan, and just finished was Kangen Institute or TAFE Bendigo with Zelda. Then for the next presenter, we have here Mithun, I mate. So this is for Australian Catholic University. So take it away. Hello everyone. Uh, Mitch, just give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. You can hear, perfect. I mean, it's been, yes. it's been two years I've been using Zoom and every time I use it, <laughs> I feel like I'm using for the first time. Zelda, thank you so much for for helping me, <laughs> putting me out of my misery. Uh, uh, thanks to Bendiko Tev for, for pulling through. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mithun Gururaj. I'm not, not new to the Philippines. I've been the regional manager uh, for the Philippines for, for a few years now. I'm based in Brisbane, ironically I'm based in Brisbane, but all my love today goes to Victoria. All my love is for, for, for our beautiful, campus in Ballarat. I was just going to say Bendigo, by the way. Uh, all my love for, for Ballarat campus, the, the screen you see behind me, the virtual, that is a beautiful brand new facility for physiotherapy at the campus. I've got a, I've got a presentation to share. Um, <clears throat> sorry about what happened about 10 minutes ago. I was trying to share my screen and turn my camera on and boom, Zoom, Zoom uh, gave up on me. So I had to get out and come back in. So Mitch, thanks for saving the day. Uh, let's see how it works this time when I'm trying to share my screen again. Uh, bear with me. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> and I hope you can see my screen, guys. All good. Wonderful. And you can see my screen. That is excellent. Um, again, wonderful. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks everyone for joining um, to this exclusive uh, webinar for studying Aus regional, Australia, regional Victoria uh, with a focus on our Ballarat campus. I'd like to thank Cecilia uh, from IDP, uh, Mitch yourself, uh, Belinda, I, I see you're there as well, and all the other university reps who have are, who are presented already and who are about to present. It's wonderful to see you all virtually. And hopefully, when the borders, now that they were reopened, we will all see you on the road very shortly. Uh, before we kick off, I always like to start with a bit of a bang. 
Let's see if it works. It's time to break old patterns. Get ahead of the competition. And share a home cooked meal. To witness something historical. Be a part of a family. And find your people. Or finding a place that's yours. Stick to your beliefs. <clears throat> and challenge what you know. To practice new skills. And put your skills into practice. Acknowledge old traditions. And make new ones. Light up your future. With a network of support. And the backing of a community. So start here. go anywhere. This is ACU Ballarat. Wonderful. So who are we? Uh, who is the Australian Catholic University? We are a leading uh, group of universities, uh, a leader in uh, world leading academics. We've got home to nearly 5,000 international students from over 100 and 100 countries. We're a world-ranked university, and we welcome students from all beliefs and welcome. It's, it's, it's very common for students to think, oh, it's a Catholic university. Am I, am I welcome there? Can I study there? Do I have to be Catholic? None of that. It's, it's, it's an Australian university supported by the federal government. It's a public university, um, and which is why we welcome students from all, all nationalities. And, and one of the unique things about Australia is uh, we don't ask uh, any questions about your faith or religion. So in the application, you will not see that question at all. So you can apply to any institution. Um, and most importantly, if you're applying to ACU, you're absolutely more than welcome to come through to us. A bit of a history of the university. I, I think that's that um, adds to what I'm gonna say is we actually started off uh, in the 1857. So the history is back then. Uh, we started off as Catholic colleges across Australia in, uh, in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, and obviously Ballarat. It's one of the founding campuses of the university. In 19, 1991, a decree was formed um, and, uh, and, uh, and a number of organization called the Australian Catholic University was brought in um, where all the campuses sort of came, moved out of the colleges, uh, Catholic colleges and became campuses of the Australian Catholic University. In 2015, we did 25 years, which was a milestone. In 2020, in the peak of the pandemic, we did our 30th year celebration and we've established ourselves as a research intense university. Uh, and we are in the, in the top 50 uh, youngest universities uh, uh, in the most recent survey by the Times Higher Education ranking. So that's something that ASU is really, really proud of. Uh, and, and here I was wanting to you know, explore and explain that that uh, ACU has that national flavor, but with uh, regional campuses across Australia. <clears throat> why would you choose ACU? Now, why? Uh, there's so many universities out there. There's obviously other countries to choose from. But what is so unique about uh, about ACU? We are a highly ranked university. We are a really affordable university, and then that's two words that are sometimes not really synonymous to each other. You know, if it's a highly ranked university, you end up breaking the bank. You end up paying a lot more tuition fee. But then, not with ACU. You know, we are you're a highly ranked university, but the, the philosophy of the university is deep down in within the fact that to make the education more affordable. I think that's that's where the, the Catholic approach comes in to make education more accessible to students across the world. It's a perfect fit for students, you know, who are wanting to study varied amounts of very different degrees uh, of education and they can come and do that at, at ACU. We have got international acclaim, we've won a lot of awards and, and continue to do so. Um, 
we've got accommodation facilities and we offer a very nurturing experience uh, again with with the fact that it's a faith based institution um, with a strong network of global partners and partnerships again both catholic and non catholic institutions are partnered with acu uh, we have partners of over 200 institutions across 50 countries and that's a growing number and that as i said includes both faith based and non faith based institutions across the world and the most important what i wanted to keep it to the end to say in this slide was the work ready skills that's going to be very important again i'm going to touch upon this as we move forward the work ready skills is going to be absolutely critical for your studies in education in australia many years ago uh, the question was thrown at at universities in australia and about what what happens to intern internships a lot of graduates came out and said well i like to apply for a job at the end of my degree uh, and the first job i applied to they asked me if i have work experience now if you have work experience uh, why do you need a degree? You know, that's that's a sort of a chicken and egg question um, or a cat on the wall question that that universities were faced with. So the university then said, well, students are not going to gain experience if they are going to be studying in a university. Uh, so the, what we did is then we included work integrated learning, internships, uh, career development, uh, professional development while students are studying within the program, volunteer experience programs, community engagement programs are all imbibed or all part of a student's study structure. It could be any program at the university, more likely there'll be some sort of a work integrated learning embedded into the program. So students are absolutely ready to go out and find work when they complete the degree. That I think has been a big difference for ACU from a student's point of view, and also from a, from a person, uh, from a third party point of view, like myself and I, uh, as an employee, but then I look, stand back and look at students. I say, that's one thing that really benefits the students the most is that work integrated learning aspect of things. We've got several campuses across Australia. If you look at all our campuses and you say, Mithun, pick your choose, uh, make a choice and tell us which is your main campus, I would be, I would be dumbstruck. I wouldn't know which is my main campus. ACU uh, does not really have a main campus. We are sort of a national university uh, with, with sort of uh, 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 campuses in, in some of our major cities. Uh, we don't have in Western Australia, uh, and hopefully we will run our courses in Adelaide as an international campus one day, uh, but we've got campuses. I'm in Brisbane, this is home for me. Uh, but as I said, I, I work in the Philippines, I work for the Philippines, uh, focusing on all states for, for ACU. We've got campuses in North Sydney, Blacktown and Strathfield forming three large campuses in Sydney. We've got an amazing campus in Canberra, the capital of Australia, uh, and a fantastic ca campus in Melbourne, which is probably in my personal opinion, perhaps the best campus in terms of more students uh, number and you know the lifestyle and the and the wonderful student experience that students get at, at our Melbourne campus. And our lovely Ballarat campus, which is just under two hours drive from, uh, from uh, Melbourne and has become uh, very, very popular in the last couple of years, uh, where students have chosen to study in, in Ballarat for mainly for the regional status. Well, two years, they haven't been able to come to Australia, but the inquiries for Ballarat have certainly been growing a lot. Today, we won't focus on other campuses. We will talk mainly about what we do in Ballarat. I can talk about Melbourne, but I would like to really stick to the Ballarat uh, component. Um, just about growing reputation. I mean, in Australia, we are, we are number one in graduate employment, five stars in full-time employment, learner engagement, skills development. Uh, second in Australia for graduate employer satisfaction. That's very important. It's not just about finding you students or uh, finding students out there, employer, um, because with our association, affiliation, and our brand, we might be able to find employers to come and endorse our students. But how happy are those employers? That's, a, that's an interesting statistic that we have. That's an interesting survey that ACU does every year. And, and often, very often, we are right at the top. We uh, are in the first top three or five universities in Australia with the highest graduate employer satisfaction. Um, in the Asia Pacific, we are in the top 80 universities in Asia Pacific and top 2% in the uh, universities in the world top 10 Catholic universities in the world, um, top 16 in Generation Y universities, and, and some of our top courses have been in the, in the global ranking. Sports science is ranked 22 in the world, nursing is ranked 18 in the world, and education is ranked 46 in the world. That, that tells you that um, some of our courses, uh, the university is in top 250 rankings in the world, but our individual courses are, are in the top 50 already. And you can see sports science being at the top 20, top 30, it's, it's a great achievement for the university because that means our focus on exercise and sports science has, has really paid off. Moving on, um, the student experience is very important for us. Uh, we, we, we offer a wide range of courses uh, across our international portfolio for both domestic and international students. Students can do undergraduate programs, postgraduate courses, research courses, uh, and, and many of these courses are accredited by their, their individual peak bodies. 
Um, you're looking at Faculty of Education Arts with a, with a, with a whole heap of courses in arts, uh, in education and teaching programs that students can actually finish and become teachers and fill that big gap that we have where we don't have a lot of secondary school teachers. There, Australia is always, you know, looking for secondary school teachers in the, in the, in the labor market. Um, we also have the Faculty of Law and Health Sciences, which is perhaps our biggest uh, faculty. Uh, we have the most number of you know, students also studying in the health sciences. Nursing, obviously, is the most popular program, very uh, closely flo followed by the popularity for physiotherapy, speech pathology, occupational therapy, um, social work, uh, public health, and uh, biomedical sciences, health sciences, you name it. These courses are very, very popular. Uh, in the ongoing you know, uh, scheme of things. Uh, Faculty of Law and Business is also very, very popular where we offer undergraduate, postgraduate business law programs uh, for students and, and for those students who are uh, wanting to explore the, uh, the theological bent, the, the uh, study of religions, uh, they're more than welcome to come and study and being a Catholic university, I think uh, it does justify that we run these courses uh, to, to, its, to, its, to its best capabilities. Uh, we do have undergraduate theology courses and the masters in theological study courses. And along with them goes along the philosophy subjects as well. And students can explore doing PhD um, if, they, if they consider ACU. Um, just a bit more about the study areas. And again, please be aware, all these courses are not available in the Ballarat campus. I've got a slide separately talking about Ballarat. I'm just giving you an overview of the university. Um, and study areas, this includes, you know, allied health and business, creative arts, global studies, humanities, you know, information technology, law and criminology, nursing, you know, psychology, that's a big, that's a big one for ACU, especially from the Philippines. So a lot of international students come and study uh, psychology at ACU, public health, uh, sports, exercise, science, and teaching. So some of these areas are very niche, uh, and ACU has has you know has uh, has had a long history of delivering them to international students. Speaking of Ballarat campus, now that's uh, it, it's a it's a wonderful little campus. Um, it is obviously a regional campus, uh, hosts a smaller number of students. It's I think the strength of the entire campus is under 1,500 students in total. That includes both domestic and international students. Has not been the most popular for international students, but in the last couple of years, a lot of students have been looking at or wanting to study in at Canberra and Ballarat campuses, mainly for its regional status, mainly the fact that the cities like Sydney and Melbourne are probably uh, getting busier. So a lot of students are coming towards uh, Brisbane. Uh, many of them are choosing Canberra, and many students are now looking at exploring our Ballarat campus. We are in the state where we are making recommendations to the university to run many more courses than the ones we are, than the small courses, little courses that we have there. And hopefully, in the next few years, Ballarat will get that uh, big focus in in offering uh, uh, more courses at the university. We have a very central location. Uh, we are not far from the uh, Lake uh, Venderu. Uh, Venduri, I never said that properly, um, and uh, it's uh, it's home to some some amazing history um, and and culture in regional Victoria, um, and we offer obviously free parking for for students, um, and obviously we have a state of the art uh, physiotherapy building with labs and simulation rooms um, to speak of it. <clears throat> As I mentioned, I just wanted to add what students can expect on the Ballarat campus. There's obviously, I mentioned, there's its own radio station. Uh, there's a CBD location. There's students' common area, the nursing labs, and early childhood learning space. Um, new facilities opened in 2016 for physiotherapy. Obviously, students have access to free Wi-Fi, cafeteria, printing services, uh, the student association lounge, um, accommodation services, and the um, and its own, uh, I mentioned, radio station. So a lot of students, you know, explore and, and require these things um, to make their, their study a, a success um, and, and memorable in terms of their experience. So what are the courses that we offer at the, at the Ballarat campus? We offer the Bachelor of Physiotherapy, that's a four-year program, the Bachelor of Nursing and the Bachelor of Enroll Nurses, uh, which is three years and two years respectively. Bachelor of uh, Nursing and Enroll Nurses is for those students who have done a diploma of nursing program, say for example, like in the Bendigo TAFE, if they offer the nursing, in diploma, the students can complete their diploma program and come out to ACU to, the, to do the Bachelor of Nursing and Enrolled Nurses. That's a, that's a, that's a two-year program itself. But if you're looking for a direct entry into a full three-year nursing degree soon after your year 12, or you'll want to explore a new degree altogether, that's a three-year qualification of the nursing. We have a wonderful repository of courses in early childhood education and primary education, which is both four-year programs. So students can choose to, you know, uh, explore wanting to be an early childhood teacher or a primary school teacher uh, that we offer. We also have uh, educational studies courses 
the Diploma of Educational Studies in Tertiary Preparation, the Master of Philosophy, and some PhD programs, especially in the areas of, of health and education for students to consider for a three-year program. I know you can uh, perhaps a uh, smaller uh, number of courses compared to some of the other universities um, in university colleagues who are able to uh, talk about their courses. Uh, but in the larger scheme of things, Melbourne also has has a very large pool of courses that we that we offer at the university. Mitch, I won't be too long. I know you allowed me 15 minutes, uh, uh, but allow me a couple more minutes for my previous debacles and I'll make up for it. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Nicole. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, speaking of, I wanted to just hit, come back to the work integrated learning concept. I'll switch back between these two slides. If you look at physiotherapy, you look at nursing, education, teaching, um, these are some hard hitting areas where you want to be able to get some experience while you while you finish your degree. These degrees are very, very uh, professional in terms of their, their the content and uh, what you learn. And it's very really hands-on, it's very really hands-on deck. Right? Perhaps the first, first four to six subjects might be very theory-based subjects, but after that, you are going to be in a mixed mode where you're learning both the practical aspect of, of health and physiotherapy and nursing subjects, along with the professional and the more you know, practical placements. Uh, so that's really important to focus on the work integrated learning because ACO sort of guarantees that for most of our courses, both at the undergraduate and postgraduate level. Uh, and it could be it could be internships, volunteer experience programs, clinical placements, well, non-clinical placements, professional placements. Um, it could be community engagement opportunity that, that's available for uh, through the campus ministry that the ACU uh, offers to international students. So explore that, make sure you take it because that's, you never know what sort of experience actually ends up being a larger idea and a larger opportunity for international students. So I always tell whatever you get the first time, just take it and, and keep it in your kitty and, and ex experience it. And, and you can always change, but then if you don't do anything about it, you don't use these experiences that's already there and you're always looking at a greater, much greater experience, you probably have missed the boat because you need to, you know, you need to, you know, probably take on small roles to, you know, gain a larger experience. And we've had some amazing stories, uh, both within the university and outside, where we see students taking on these smaller opportunities and making something really big out of it. So uh, the work integrated learning is something that I root for uh, very strongly for, for international students. You probably all want to know about scholarships. We do offer a lot of scholarships. Uh, the International Student Scholarship, which is offered to 20 international students every year, also includes the Ballarat campus. So if you are one of the high achieving merit students who has, who's gained over 80% average in the Philippines, you're more than eligible to apply uh, for the International Student Scholarship. And the scholarship entails 50% uh, merit scholarship to 20 students every year. So for the duration of the program, you get a 50% scholarship. There's also the Global Excellence Scholarship, uh, for mainly into business and IT courses, which you don't, don't offer in Ballarat, but then should you be looking into, into a Melbourne campus, you can certainly explore that. You've got the Alliance Care Scholarship, which is offered to one undergraduate and one postgraduate partial scholarship, uh, which, which saves about half a semester, which, yeah, it's about half a semester tuition fee. Uh, there's the Pathway to Victoria Scholarship, which, which is, of, of course, for both uh, Melbourne and Ballarat campuses, a $2,500 grant. Uh, for students commencing in, in either undergraduate or postgraduate courses, uh, sorry, it, it either eligible pathway or undergraduate courses at the university. Uh, uh, we also have scholarships uh, towards accommodation as well um, that we offer our international students and I've, I've got some information about accommodation as we go forward. Um, what we can guarantee our students, please note um, that these services are, are here to help you achieve your goals. Now, Someone like an IDP, Mitch and her team, you know, and Cecilia, and, and all of them are assisting you from the Philippines to get to Australia. You know, all the assistance is provided and they pass it on. Someone like me and Mitch probably work together to bring in students here. But what happens when the students come here? I will then pass it on to our international student advisors, who is probably your friend, uh, who will be able to assist you in all sorts of queries. It could be issues with academic skills. It could be you want to know more about career development service. Uh, you want to understand what the Office of Student Success does. Um, there's the Ask ACU Center, there's the peer assisted study sessions, the student advocacy service, and a whole heap of services for your health and well being. It could be counseling service, disability service, uh, health, sports, and well being, you know, things that you, you may not know that exist at the university. Uh, joining associations, you know, joining the legal service or understanding campus ministry. So, all these micro little areas are all offered at the university and all of that information can come from the ISA who becomes your primary contact while you're on the campus. Uh, so that's the sort of support that we offer you. And this is guaranteed. And this experience is guaranteed across all the campuses of ACU 
not just the one or two campuses. We, we do it for all international students, no matter where you study. And finally, about, about, uh, about accommodation, I, I, I think there was a video if I can quickly play and see if that works. It works. just under three kilometer ride between the accommodation in Ballarat, um, uh, which is our managed residences uh, in, in the city to the ACU campus. The, the prices are between 180 to $200 uh, per week. Um, there's more information obviously on the link. I will share this presentation and, and uh, Mitch and team, if you can just spread it across the students, that'd be great. Um, for those who want to explore studying in Victoria, both in Ballarat and, and Melbourne. Um, on that mm -hmm. note, I'll move on. Uh, there is obviously a lot of facility coming up. We're building more infrastructure and more purpose-built facilities is, is on the way. So uh, there's a lot of space for innovation at the, at the university. Going forward, please join the conversation. There's a lot going on on Facebook. Uh, Instagram has, has been lit on fire again because all the students are back. Orientation week is on. So there's so much commentary. There's so much uh, social media uh, information available that you might actually feel that you are in Ballarat or, or, or Melbourne itself uh, uh, with, with all this happening on social media. So feel free, YouTube has got all the wonderful videos and the most updated videos on Ballarat and Melbourne. Um, so feel free to join the conversation. Obviously connect with IDP Education in Manila, uh, one of my favorite agents. I work very closely with them uh, and in Cebu. Um, and, um, and obviously we, we would welcome you anytime to the university. On that note, I would like to say thank you very much. I have gone over by eight and a half minutes, but I think IDP is used to me going over time. Uh, guys, thank you once again. It's been a pleasure and I hope to see you all soon very shortly. Thank you, Mithun. Thank you for taking us through um, AC Ballarat in Melbourne. So um, before I continue on, I'd like to introduce um, one of our counselors, one of our newest counselors who just joined in IDP. So for those students who would want to know further, who would want to inquire about um, the different universities you've met earlier. So we have here Miss Maika. So she'll be assisting you later on or perhaps in the next couple of days because definitely you can book an appointment with us. So um, just to recap once again for those who just came in. So for our presentations this afternoon, so we've had um, Study Melbourne with Belinda, Deakin University with Ange, Federation University with Dan, and Australian Catholic University with Mithun and Kangan Institute or um, Taith Bendigo with Zelda. So for our last presenter, we have here um, Robbie from Monash University. Take it away, Robbie. Thank you. Hi, hi. Thank you, Mitz, for introducing me. And hello everyone, my name is Robbie. Um, I'm located in Indonesia and I'm working for Monash University as well, uh, but based in Indonesia uh, because I'm the local representative for Monash University of Indonesia, but I also often helping uh, Philippines trade as well. And normally before COVID-19, I also came to Manila and Cebu to help the event as well. And I hope very soon we can do that again, <laughs> finger crossed. And uh, yeah, we can do the activities as normal. And thank you 
thanks God as well, uh, the border also already reopening, uh, not only for students, but also for the visitors as well. So um, I think uh, we can start the presentation now. And uh, Monash is a very good university. We are very young. We just 62 years old, but uh, right now uh, Monash uh, already become the largest university in Australia in terms of the students' numbers, because uh, in terms of the student population, we have uh, almost 90,000 students in Australia and also our offshore campus. Uh, in terms of the location of the campus, we have four campuses in Melbourne. And because today we talk about the regional campus, yes, we do have a campus located in the regional area, which is uh, our Peninsula campus. And in terms of uh, our World University ranking, as you can see, uh, many of our ranking by QS time higher education, QS graduate employability, and national Taiwan University ranking, uh, all of our ranking already top 100 in the world. And uh, as you can see as well, Melbourne always uh, become the most livable city in the world, not only the city, but also the regional area. And here is our campus, and we are focusing on the Peninsula campus. Uh, the good news about our Peninsula campus, it is, yes, indeed very beautiful. And I believe many uh, Philippine students are looking for a career in medical health sciences and nursing area and also education, which is mainly located in the Peninsula campus. In our Peninsula campus, we also have our own uh, accommodation. And we also have the Monash Addiction Research Center, Aging and Independent Living Research Centers. And we also has around 40,000 students and 300 academic staff located in Peninsula campus. And we also have the free shuttle bus from Clayton to Peninsula campus or free shuttle bus from Peninsula campus to train station. And the good news is only five minutes to the beach. So uh, it's a very good location. And not only that, I think, uh, Everyone who already uh, goes to Melbourne um, most likely know that Medinsula is area for winery and golf course as well. So the location is very good. And yes, the living cost is not as expensive if you live in the city. In terms of the course offered at Medinsula campus, as you can see, uh, we have the Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Education, nursing, body medicines, nursing in, in midwifery, occupational therapy and physiotherapy and master of teaching as well. Why study uh, health sciences in Australia? Because as you can see from the joboutlook.gov.au data from the Ministry of Workforce Australia, uh, the career projection growth in this area is very high in Australia and the salary uh, average also uh, consider good enough uh, and above the standard uh, salary per week in Australia for another career. So as you can see, uh, we have the nursing aid made by free in Australia. And the good news, midwife also uh, listed in the priority migration skill occupation list. So uh, the career will be very good. And we also have the Bachelor of Nursing as well in Peninsula campus. And in terms of the education, yes, education is also uh, very good in terms of the career preposition because uh, we need more teachers, I believe, in Australia, and especially in early childhood and primary education, and the location also uh, in Peninsula campus. Because Peninsula campus, I believe, it's surrounded by uh, community, so we majority, I think, of our students also take placement in the surrounding schools in Peninsula area as well. As you can see, I think uh, if you study Bachelor of Education, our course already accredited by Victoria Institute of Teachings and also by required professional body if you want to teach by in the early childhood area. And in every year, we have the professional experience as well, as you can see in the sample course map. 
and uh, why Mones? I think for education, as you can see, uh, we rank 12 in the world for education, and uh, we have, I think, in total around 80 days experience uh, teaching placement, not only in Australia but also possible in the overseas because some of our students. Uh, has done the placement, uh, the teaching placement in Sweden and also in Italy and many locations in overseas. And uh, you also are possible to study double degree if you want to study education combined with business or combined with science, it's also possible. And it will equip you with the uh, uh, right qualification to be eligible uh, to teach in Australia later on. And we also have the pathway program for uh, students, not only foundation, but also the diploma, uh, which is equivalent to year one, because as you know, uh, the Philippine K-12 students cannot go directly to university, but they must go through a diploma first if they want to go to Monash University. And this is the sample of our uh, accommodation in Peninsula campus. It's brand new. Uh, it's eco style design, I think. And uh, you will have your own uh, private room with N suite bathroom as well. Uh, so this one is uh, pretty uh, good as well. And now we talk about the entry requirements. Uh, yep, as you can see, uh, direct entry uh, to university at this time is not. Uh, possible for K-12 uh, graduates. However, K-12 graduates can be accepted uh, to direct entry by uh, using SAT, Advanced Placement Score, or ACT by looking at the prerequisite subject as well. So uh, if they are completing the K-12, they, need, they can apply for direct entry by submitting the SAT, AP, and ACT, but we also need to check the prerequisite requirement, such as mathematics or science subject if they want to go to engineering and so on. Uh, yeah, I think that's the requirement. And the student from K-12, if they want to go to uh, Monash, I think we suggest them to go for foundation or diploma first, because I think, uh, we still recognize K-12 for diploma or our foundation. And for postgraduate, uh, I noticed that uh, we have several systems, grading scale system in Philippines. So it's uh, very uh, depending on where you study and uh, how about the grading scale at your university because uh, we have a lot of requirement here, uh, different requirements. So it's very depending on the, what course you applied and where do you study and how the grading scale at your university. Uh, normally you can see our requirement in the website. So we require pass credit distinction or high distinction, but this is the guideline. So I will pass the PowerPoint to IDP after this. So uh, you can check later on on uh, the requirement if you want to apply for the postgraduate degree. And the most important part of this presentation is the Bursary, <laughs> yeah. So if we talk about the bursary, I think if you apply for this year, uh, but for undergrad and postgraduate, it's a coursework scheme. Uh, we have uh, 10,000 AUD dollars. So uh, will be distributed in two semester, which is uh, $5,000 in, uh, in the first semester and $5,000 uh, in the second semester payment. And we also have the bursary scheme for Monash College in 2022. Uh, and this is applicable for foundation and also diploma in Monash College Australia, uh, which is right now we have 8,000 AUD uh, study grant. So, uh, and on, on top of that, we also have 2,500 uh, Victoria Government Pathway Scholarships. Uh, so in total, uh, by combining these uh, scholarships and bursary scheme, we can uh, give you a maximum amount of $10,500 uh, scholarship for Monash College application. So that's very generous. And I think that's the biggest uh, 
scholarships and bursary that we give uh, in the past five years, I think. <laughs> yeah, so it's very generous. And the good news, we also have a very brand new campus in Dockland. Uh, in, it is in the city and we have like eight story buildings, uh, which is a very brand new, just open uh, this year because the uh, COVID-19, uh, we only able to open our campus this year as well. Uh, okay, and I think uh, that's all. And thank you for listening. And if you have any question, please contact my supervisor, which is Nicholas So, uh, uh, as you can see in the email address. And uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robbie. So that's it for Monash. Um, by the way, before anything else, so Deacon has to leave because of an emergency, but later on, if you got specific questions for Ange of Deacon, um, feel free to ask so I can just collate everything and um, message it to her privately. So thank you again, Robbie. And yeah, so that's it for this afternoon. So again, thank you, everyone. I'll hand it over to Cecil. Thank you, Mitch. Um, thank you, Zelda, Robbie, Dan, and of course, Micah. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have. But again, I'd like to thank all of our participants um, for today. Of course, Belinda from Study Melbourne, Ange from Deakin University. There, there's also Dan from Fed Uni or Federation University. Um, Mithun from Australian Catholic University. Zelda from Safe Bendigo and Kangan Institute, and of course, Robbie from Monash University. For any of you here who are interested to further discuss your options or you have further questions, um, please stay back as you can also book an appointment with one of our counselors and we can start the process for you. For those who are already in the process but are still quite undecided, um, you can also stay back and you know book a follow-up appointment with your counselor so we can get those sorted out. Again, thanks everyone. If you were not able to watch the beginning or at least attend the first part of this session, this session has been recorded or is currently still being recorded and will be shared by our YouTube page very, very soon. Thanks, everyone, and have a good afternoon or evening for our colleagues in Australia. See you again soon. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you then for joining. Thank you, everyone. See you.